Welcome to the Rising Woman Leaders Podcast. We are a sisterhood of women stepping into courage, self-love, and feminine leadership. I'm your host, Meredith Rahm, and here I'll be sharing personal insights as well as interviews with inspiring leaders and entrepreneurs so you can create more daily magic in your life and also grow your business without losing sight of spiritual values as a rising woman leader. If you like this podcast, use our hashtag Rising Woman Leaders, follow me on Instagram at Meredith Rom, and sign up for email updates at risingwomanleaders.com. You'll receive all the new and inspiring content, including insights I only share on email. Now get cozy with a cup of tea, light a candle, and grab a journal to listen to this week's magical radio podcast. Welcome to our first podcast. This is Meredith Rahm, and today I'll be sharing about how to embody fearless feminine confidence. But I also thought it would be great since this is the first podcast to share a little bit more of my personal story, why I've created this podcast, the bigger vision of Rising Woman Leaders, and then I'm going to dive into my tips on how to stay true to our soft, sweet, nurturing side while gathering up that courage to be a leader. I'll share about the importance of vulnerability, how to tap into feminine energy, and to use your feminine nature to your advantage as a leader, teacher, and entrepreneur. I created this podcast because I see an awakening in women, especially in the sweet, kind, and nurturing women who are ready to stand up, to express themselves, and to share their voice. However, I know from personal experience, a lot can get in the way when we step up to lead. I myself struggled with being more shy and sensitive person and wondering how I could really share my voice in the world. It can get really tricky knowing how to authentically express yourself and to take action towards your dreams when you might be held back by self-doubt or fear. However, I believe the world needs more women connected to our soft, nurturing nature who are willing to be vulnerable, to step up, to accurately represent the needs of our world. Feminine confidence is about tapping into your soft, sensitive, kind side while also seeing that as an asset to who you are as a leader. I believe you do not need to change who you are to lead. You just need to be supported to face your fears and to listen to your intuition in order to make a bigger difference in the world. My bigger vision of Rising Woman Leaders is that this is a sisterhood of women stepping into courage, self-love, and leadership. We are learning to break free of the mold and step into lives with full of magic and synchronicity. We're showing up to believe in ourselves, to nourish and honor our feminine nature, and to learn to be vulnerable and lead from our heart. We are cultivating the courage to take care of ourselves, to share our voices, to create more magic and joy in our lives, and ultimately to show up and take better care of the world. I see rising women leaders inspiring women to break free of their fears so they can live as their highest selves. This is a growing community of women encouraging each other to live those dreams and visions and step out into the world as an entrepreneur. I'm starting off with the podcast to join women leaders all over the world together so that we can learn from each other. But one day I imagine this coming together even bigger in, with in-person events, retreats, and programs so that we can all fully embody our voices and spirits as rising woman leaders. One of my biggest fears that developed in about seventh grade was around using my voice. I became very self-conscious that what I had to say would be wrong, so I better not say anything at all. And this became part of my story. When it came time to give presentations in school, I would freeze up with fear. 
the fear literally took over my body and I felt like I did not have enough breath to speak. It was my body's way of protecting me from possible shame and embarrassment from speaking up, but it was holding me back in all areas of my life. I spent all of high school and college avoiding public speaking at all costs. I even hated introducing myself in a small group because I became so afraid I wouldn't have enough breath to speak. Now fast forward to my first yoga class during college. I was so inspired listening to my teacher powerfully leading a room of 50 people through the sequences. I looked up to each of my teachers and thought, If only I could one day do that. But becoming a yoga teacher was what scared me most in the entire world. The thought of it just had me want to run away. But there was also just a little bit of excitement about the idea of teaching. Eleanor Roosevelt says, The very next thing you need to be doing is what terrifies you the most. I've learned that when there is fear, but also excitement, that is where life is pointing you to go. It took four years after that first yoga class before I decided to become a teacher, and it took a whole year after that before I started teaching. I let it go on for a long time, but there came a point that the pain and the suffering of having a debilitating fear was less than the pain I anticipated in actually facing the fear itself. I love this quote from Gabrielle Bernstein. Fear is a sure sign you've been relying on your own strength. Freedom is a sign you've been relying on the strength of a higher power. There are so many sweet, kind, and sensitive women who are ready to step out of their comfort zone, but they are afraid. They have self-doubt, fear of failure, are afraid to speak up, or afraid to be seen. This was me just a few years ago, and I know because I've been willing to speak up. I've been able to help so many people because I was willing to face that fear, and now I get to live my life knowing that I can get up in front of a group of people. I can be a speaker. I can be a teacher. I can just come up with a beautiful dream and know that I can achieve it and make it possible in my life. I've been able to be of service and to live my purpose, and because of that, I am happier and I am making a difference. I wake up every day feeling grateful for my life. I know there are more women ready to step up and to share their voice, and so I'm sharing what I've learned to help you take those first steps. A few years ago, I read the book Quiet by Susan Cain. Approximately one-third to one-half of the population are considered more introverted people. Now, can you imagine the kind of world we would live in if there were only more aggressive or extroverted people that were stepping up to lead? There would be such an imbalance in the world. But now imagine the kind of world we would live in If there were loving, kind, and sensitive women in leadership roles, imagine the kind of role models we would have for our children. Imagine the kind of healing that would take place on a global scale. Take a moment to close your eyes and center into your breath. When you think of yourself as a leader, what comes up? What scares you? What are you really afraid of? And what would it be like to be over this fear? Now imagine the exact opposite outcome of what scares you. What if this fear was telling you something about your future? What if this was the exact next step you needed to take in your life? I believe our fears tell us a lot about our life purpose. When I feel fear and a little excitement, I know I'm being presented with an opportunity to grow. 
I have a beautiful quote here by Kate Northrup, and she says, The thing I'm going to urge you to move toward is the thing you're most afraid of. Damn, you thought you were going to get off the hook, eh? The reality is that we'll never be free from fear controlling us until we saunter toward it and give it a good stare down or at least a flirtatious wink. And the really good news is that the thing you're most scared of doing will ultimately be the highest leverage thing you can do. What I mean by that is the amount of emotional charge you have about something that is currently manifesting as fear will be proportional to the amount of power in increased income, success, value added, and or sheer happiness that is in store for you when you do that thing. Within your fear lies a glimmering kernel of desire, hope, and creation. Our hopes and fears are deeply related and sometimes even two sides of the same coin. Within your deepest fear lies your deepest knowing of where your brilliance would best be utilized. And that's why you are so freaked out. Courage isn't about battling over fear or winning over fear. It's simply about tending to what is important. It's the directing of one's attention to something else. So what is your vision? What do you feel called to do in the world? When that attention is so strong and direct, there is no room for fear and self-doubt. What does your heart yearn for more than anything? I love this quote from when I interviewed Ela Nerio. We show our courage when the attention of what we do want is stronger than the fear of what we don't. Vulnerability is key to being both fearless and staying true to your more feminine nature. The times I have allowed myself to be vulnerable have been the times I created the greatest connection and the most authentic relationships. I let down my guards and allowed myself to be fully seen. I remember once I was going through a really difficult time living in Berkeley, and I knew I needed to leave my living situation. So I put in my one month's notice and started looking for a place to move. Our house, my housemates found a replacement for my room. And unfortunately, every place that I applied for chose someone else before me. And it got down to only three days before the month was over and I still didn't have a place to live. I, every week I would go to my Sunday morning yoga class with my teacher, Kimber, and This week, I went up to her to ask if she would hold me in her prayers so that I could find a home because I was going to be homeless in just three days. And as I started to tell her, I broke down crying. I felt the weight and the vulnerability of not having a home. And she walked me out into the hallway and stayed with me while I couldn't stop crying. She just kept reminding me, feel your feet on the ground. Eventually, I did find a place to move, and everything worked out fine. But I look back on that moment as one of the defining moments in my relationship with her. That moment solidified my relationship and my connection to that teacher. She went on to become one of my greatest mentors and is someone I'm still very close to today. Brene Brown, who wrote the book Daring Greatly, says... You can't experience the depth of joy and love without experiencing vulnerability. True belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our own level of self-acceptance. We need to open ourselves and to be vulnerable with other women. This is why women's circles are so important and ceremonies where we get to be real and vulnerable with each other and tell each other when we're jealous or intimidated, get it out into the open so we can move forward in our lives rather than be secretly holding it all in and creating limitations in our ability to connect with each other. 
Self-doubt is another block that can come up in thinking about being a leader. I love uh, insights from the woman Casey Baker. She's a speaker and teaches women how to really find their, their inner voice. We need to learn how to be present with our inner critic and to move forward anyways. And so what Casey says is that whether you are birthing a baby or a dream, self-doubt is a natural part of the process. And there was a story that Casey was giving birth to her first child and she was in that moment with her midwife and turned to her and said, I can't do this. I just can't do this. And the midwife turned to her and said, Casey, you are doing this. And that was just this epiphany moment for her to see that, wow, any creative act in the world, whether it be creatively birthing a child, being in that creation process, or creating a dream that you have in your life, a business, something that you want to bring out into the world, self-doubt will be there. It's a natural part of any creative process. We can learn to see our self-doubt arise and then to not take it so seriously when we know that it's just a natural part of the process. There's a story I love to share that describes non-dual tantric Buddhist philosophy. Non-dual means that you are not separate from the divine and tantric means the embracing of the material world as part of a spiritual path. I want you to imagine a beautiful lotus flower. The flower is blossoming at the surface of a pond. And in many Hindu religions, the people thought that the goal of spirituality was to blossom like the lotus flower, to rise above all the muck underneath the water, and to rise above the surface and become this beautiful flower. However, the tantric perspective was much more like a botanist. All that muck and gunk in the pond, which represents the material world, is actually needed for the lotus flower to grow and blossom and be so beautiful. So all the difficulties of this material world are actually needed. This really stayed with me. And I thought about, wow, all these fears that I've had in my life, all these difficult phone calls I didn't want to make, Those may actually be part of the spiritual path. Facing our fears is actually what will progress us further in our spiritual lives. And that was when I really started facing my fears because I knew this material world was a means for me to spiritually progress in my life. Another quote I love is from Stacey Morgenstern. In order to be the person you want to be, you have to be that person right now. So the key is in acting and behaving like the person you want to be right now, right here. When you're willing to go outside of your comfort zone, that is when you experience the most growth. Take a moment to connect to your bigger picture and vision for your your life and what you envision for the world. When you think about why is it important to you to face your fear, why is it important to you to make this next step, then it becomes so much easier to move forward. You can begin to see the purpose of why it is important you do that thing you're afraid of why it's actually bigger than the fear. For me, it became more important to share the knowledge as a yoga teacher than to be stuck in my fear because I saw it really wasn't about me anymore. It was about service. It was about being my bigger, in the bigger world vision to create a more conscious and compassionate world. I was there to help people live without pain in their body. And when I approached my fear from this place of service, It was so much easier to feel the fear and to take action anyway. On the other side of fear, there is probably a person who genuinely needs your help. 
So every time that you are feeling blocked or you can't move forward because of a fear in your life, think about who could be helped if you were willing to take that step. I wanted to share a few affirmations with you today. And close your eyes and repeat these after me. Take a moment to center into your breath. I am choosing right livelihood. I am healing my past easily and naturally now. I allow this to be easy. I respect myself. I am a living blessing. I trust my own soul's loving guidance. I am following my divine purpose. I allow myself to thrive now. I am doing this. I can do this. This is happening now. So I've shared a lot about how to tap into your more fearless side, how to cultivate courage, but I believe in order to be balanced, we also need to honor our more feminine yin nature. To be a true rising woman leader, I believe we need to be connected to our intuition, to fully be in love and take care of ourselves and to live with daily self-love and self-care practices. In order to tap into our own healing through our feminine energy, it's important to live in harmony with our body and with self-care, to express ourselves emotionally, to enjoy sensual pleasures, to speak up and follow our heart, engage in conscious, collaborative relationships, and set boundaries to give without exhausting ourselves, to be open, to receive, to be our own authority, to make choices based on our own needs, to look at all areas of our life, to be in the the flow socially, creatively, financially, through our physical health, through education, fun, and joy. It's about devoting your love and attention to these different parts of your life so that you can grow and expand in new and fulfilling ways. This will help you connect to your more internal wisdom, your intuition, your to feel great in your body and in your life, and have the confidence to take action and face your fears. Some of my favorite self-care techniques include taking baths, doing abhyanga, which is um, rubbing oils, fine oils, all over your body. And I like to do this while reading affirmations. I could have those affirmations on a wall posted in my bathroom and speak them as I do the abhyanga practice. You can, I actually have a free gift on my website at meredithram.com. I have a four-day self-care reset ebook that you can go to and download, and it takes you through four days of amazing self-care techniques, including t- uh, green smoothie recipes. It includes different ideas for taking baths and being out in nature, and also it, actual actions and prompts to take you through different levels of self-care that also includes facing your fears really breaking down and looking at your financial life and taking care and nurturing your body. So you can download that right at my website at meredithrom.com, right in the top bar. You can enter your name and email to receive an email of that. I also really recommend taking initiative, reaching out to your girlfriends and having more female energy in your life surrounding you to really tap into that yourself. It's important to get enough sleep, to find your own optimal rhythm when it works for you, waking up in the morning, going to bed, and when to do your work, when to take care of yourself. So many different ideas. I have more in the self-care reset. 
So in summary, I've shared a lot about tapping into that more fearless and feminine nature of ourselves. I've shared about the bigger vision of Rising Woman Leaders, a little taste of what we're going to be exploring in this podcast. I've shared stories and inspiration to help you face your own fears and the importance of vulnerability and tapping into our feminine energy to show up as that rising woman leader. I know that I've shared a lot of information with you today, and some of you are going to go out and run with it. But I also know that some of you are ready for more and that you want to go deeper. And if that's you, I invite you to one more free gift, which is also on my website, meredithrom.com slash feminine dash leader. And I have three more online classes for you to find your, fe- your find your glow as a feminine leader. And when you sign up, you'll receive an email with the three recordings where I share all about how to have clear glowing skin, radiant balanced energy, and really step into that fearless feminine confidence that I've been sharing about today. This will really help you to step up as that leader that you know that you are. Again, that site is meredithrom.com slash feminine dash leader. You can sign up and you'll be emailed the recordings. I hope you found this podcast useful and helpful for you in your life. And I look forward to sharing more inspiring content and interviews in the coming weeks. Thank you for being here today, for showing up for yourself, of really making the time to be present for what it is you want to create in your life. May we all cultivate the courage to face our fears and live with freedom in our lives. May we open ourselves to spirit, to connection, and to a deeper knowing of what our purpose is, so that we can all fulfill our own sacred duty in this life. This is Meredith Rom signing off for you today. From my heart to yours, I bow. Namaste.